Hey guys, welcome to the Trout Pond. This is going to be a freaking amazing installment of the Trout Pond because we're going to put together the world's largest and most effective maggot feeder ever. I have done this. This is going to be the third year and this is going to be the best year. I want to get you guys cued into another project we got going on here. This is from Aquascape. This is a rubber membrane. We're going to put a waterfall in here that goes directly into the pond. That's going to be on another installment. But I need some help. i got to be honest, I need some help. I've been trying to produce another type of feeder. And I got it inside the root cellar here. Oh, if I can get this thing open. I've been working on this for about, well, for all summer now. And I can't quite get it right. A five gallon pail is full of earthworm. So I had to put them in here to continue this experiment. A maggot feeder is relatively easy to set up. You've got nature working with you instead of trying to work against nature. There's been a lot of science, a lot of natural science, a lot of engineering gone into and the thought process of making this work. The maggot feeder I'm going to show you in a second, but I want you guys to help me. I know there's probably somebody out there who's smarter than I am who can maybe figure this out, but I've been running experiment for two months now and it's just not turning out how I had hoped. Before all this began, I picked my own worms. I've been picking my own worms since I was a kid. It's a good skill to learn. Basically, you go out after a rain. The, better, the bigger the rain, the better. Earthworms are an invasive species and they've been brought here by early Europeans uh, to help with gardens and then they just basically took over. Earthworms are very beneficial invasive species unlike many species. All you have to do, go out with a flashlight after a strong, heavy rain, and you'll find the earthworms will come up to the surface. What they're doing is they're looking for partners. They're hermaphroditic. They're looking for any old worm to connect and exchange eggs and sperm. You're not gonna get them while they're mating. Sometimes you will later in the evening. If you're out long enough, you'll find two worms connected. And then what you gotta do is sneak up and grab them. So I was able to harvest uh, dozens and dozens and dozens, perhaps even a thousand over a thousand worms. What I don't want to do with the earthworms is just grab a handful and throw them in because that's equivalent to what I'm doing with the fish feed. So you can see I've got a five gallon pail, but that's not where I began. I started off with a smaller model and I took one container, I drilled holes in the bottom and then I put them in a slightly larger container. So what I was hoping what would happen was that the worms would migrate down over time over a course of a number of days and they would slowly come out of the container. So that's one of the problems is they don't want to come out of a container in the light. And actually if you put the worms in a substrate and then fill them over a period of time you can see that the worms will actually disperse and they'll go down. So that works to our advantage because if worms will go down in the environment then they, we can actually get them to maybe come out the bottom. So during the experiment, that's what I noticed, is the worms would come out over time uh, through the bottom. However, another problem with earthworms is they're very temperature sensitive. They actually like cool summer days. They don't like really hot, scorching weather because they'll dry out. They need enough moisture to be able to survive. So they need enough substrate to maintain that and they need to be in an environment where they're not going to dry out completely. So you're trying to convince a worm to basically go from maybe a comfortable, a semi-comfortable environment into an uncomfortable situation. Basically you want them to drop out the bottom into the pond. So I had a hard time convincing the worms to do that because I found over a couple of days the worms would come out the substrate in the bottom and then so I wanted to be able to scale that up. And then I also did experiments in the light to see if they come out in the light. So the, what I found is that the worms wouldn't move a lot if the environment was not very comfortable for them. So they would move more in the refrigerator than they would out of the refrigerator because the refrigerator is a cool environment and it's kept moist. Now if they drop into the pond, let's say there's a false bottom and they drop out into the pond at night, that's fine too. They'll live uh, one or two weeks in the water before it's a problem. So the trick is, <laughs> as always, for the worms to come out over a period of time, not desiccate, not dry out, uh, and then also not come out all at the same time. So I thought maybe a larger container would do the trick. I had this first in a, like a natural environment, not refrigerated, not in the root cellar, to see what would happen. And then I had maybe over the next four weeks, I had one or two worms end up in the bottom. So I, all I've done with this five gallon pail is drilled holes in the bottom, I mixed peat moss and regular soil, 
So my experiment is incomplete and that's where you guys really need to come in here. You guys need to help me figure out how I can get the worms to come out of this pail, thousands of worms, survive in the pail, but come out of the pail into, into, and, and drop down into the environment or come out the sides or whatever over a set period of time, say a couple of weeks. So I'm gonna run this experiment with your guidance uh, and hopefully all the worms are gonna come out. We'll do it maybe later in the fall when the temperatures are more conducive to having earthworms. In the middle of the summer, having uh, you know plus 25 degrees Celsius, that's kind of their, their uh, tolerance point between say 15 degrees Celsius and 25 degrees Celsius is their ideal. And so nothing's come through again. And I wanna show you something interesting too. So we're gonna take this pail here, which contains probably dozens or even hundreds of worms and we're going to dump it in this other pail and I want to show you what's happening because you know as time has gone on the worms have obviously moved down right worms when they're not in a comfortable environment they'll go down so let's pour it over and I'll show you you know what's going on here now if you could see that there but so that's kind of where the worms start we've got a couple of worms here nice healthy worms near the middle here. And I've never quite gone all the way down to the bottom. It gets so darn packed. And I'm not adding any weight there to it. It's just the way it is. There we go. That's what we like to see. So you see all those worms in there. And of course they're panicking and going lower. There we go. So they're, they're definitely migrating down to the bottom. So the question is if we wait long enough, are they gonna get down to the bottom and out the holes but it's pretty packed down there and uh, so you can see here's a worm there so we could throw him down to the bottom now and we can run our experiment again this madness you see there's a good mix of worms all the way through um, but like I say they're just not coming out in the bottom that's the scientific problem we're facing with the earthworms. I want you guys to leave a comment down below. If you have a solution, I'm gonna throw this back in the root cellar and we're gonna move on to our maggot experiment, which incidentally is probably the way to go if you wanna feed fish. But I would really like to have a solution for my earthworm problem, so please help me out. Somebody out there has an idea that I haven't thought of. All right, so we gotta pick a couple of trees here to make this thing work. Boro Don from uh, Modern Self-Reliance, Kevin's uh, channel, you guys know his channel. So we gotta find two trees, they're gonna go. Yes. Cherry yeah. to the birch, might be an interesting choice, but we do want it over the pond. I got a whole mess of meat. I'm guessing there's probably two, maybe 300 pounds of meat. Uh, I did something pretty interesting. I went down my street, knocked on all the doors. I said, hey, you wanna clean your, uh, Freezers, fridges, whatever else oh, you don't need anymore. I'm gonna convert it into a maggot feeder. They said, what's a maggot feeder? I said, turn into the channel and find out. This is gonna be bigger and more impressive than ever. I have done this. This is the third annual erection of the maggot feeder. Here it is right here. I'll pull it out of storage, deep storage. We got it under the cube here. And I wanna explain how you guys can make one if you've got a backyard pond, or maybe you're interested in doing some really good back country fishing too. I've thrown this out in the woods in a rural pond and filled it up and then came back and fished it and actually caught fish underneath it because what it does is it drops maggots in the water simply and tracks all the fish. So then if you come back and try to fish it out. Hit that like button. <sighs> Cause we're going in. Oh, that's the perfect height. As long as the water level doesn't increase. Yeesh, Menards. <laughs> Oh, that stinks. Oh, smells like dirty raccoon. Don's unwinding some, uh, what's this kind of, it's like 500 pound, uh, just regular run of the mill cord. I think I got that from uh, Princess Auto. Poly rope. Poly, poly rope, yeah. And then we've got some ratchet straps. I think that sign's pretty appropriate. No exit is right. Actually, there's technically a lot of exits and none of them are good exits. Okay, so we've got the uh, rough construction here. So you will want a lid if you're gonna do it. Uh, main part, reason is you don't wanna wash out all the maggots. It's gonna rain and be moist in the summer. This just happens to be an old road sign. It's just a, it's just cage. Well, that'd be one inch wide uh, meshing. Could, you yeah. could use anything, chicken wire. Uh, this is obviously heavier duty gauge because we're gonna fill this up. We're gonna put 
well, we'll guess, maybe 200 pounds of meat, something like that. It's a wheelbarrow full. So I'm actually setting this up when Kevin's not planning on coming here for another week. And hopefully by then we'll see if the, if the flies can consume all, all that meat in that uh, frame of time. Uh, and I'll keep you guys updated, but it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of protein being converted into fish food. Because we are going to get maybe more sag than we were expecting. Yeah, it's, this rope is pretty stretchy. Oh, jeez. Oh, so, <laughs> so it might, uh, but that's probably a good thing. So we got to figure out where to cut that too, right? We're going to get some sag. Once we get this thing set up and uh, we actually might want to start on the other side. I just picked these up at uh, Princess, Princess Auto. They were on sale. The brake strength is 1,500 pounds, so we should be good. We're not going to put 1,500 pounds of meat in our maggot feeder. So head over to the other side of the pond. I've been hanging up high here. So we can put it on over there, and then we'll just have to, we'll have to drag it back. But we have another rope for that. Yeah. yeah. So we're good? Yeah. Are you good with knots, Don? No. <laughs> Neither am I. Oh, yeah. I was hoping you knew a knot besides an overhand. I didn't leave much of a tail there. It's like no rope is being wasted on this job. So we're working smarter, not harder. We could uh, throw the kayak in the water and paddle across, but this is way easier. We can, we can always make it shorter too, right? If that doesn't work. Okay, so we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit because we got to add the maggot feeder now. Yeah. Is if we don't add the maggot feeder now, we will never be able to add the maggot feeder or we'll have to untie it anyway. This is where it gets tricky and when you want some help, I need an extra guy. You can use moving parts like wheels and stuff like that, but there's always a risk that it, something about it doesn't work right or you know, whatever. This is simple, just friction. Now we're into the territory where we gotta be. I think that'll, that'll come through, right? Oh, I'm sure, yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna have to, we'll have to do it at the same time. You'll have to lift and, do I, should I just tie it back on it? Or where am I gonna tie this off to? We've got one rope hooked up on this side. Of course, we got the lid on there now. We've got the false bottom. Don't tell the maggots that though. And on the other side, if you guys can tell, but we've got another rope and that is gonna go to the far side over there to operate that into things. You've got the channel here, which holds the rope up. It's gonna be obviously working off of friction up here. And that's gonna be able to suspend out in the middle of the pond. We don't have any weight in there yet. <laughs> You gotta remember we're putting hundreds of pounds in there. There we go. Okay. And then Don, you can go for a run if you want. Actually, before you go, we've got another bit of paracord here. This is all Princess Auto stuff. Cheap, on sale. Right, so then we have a way to pull it this way and that way. And then even when it's raining, those bot flies can be active. They'll just, they're gonna have a big freaking party in there. Absolutely, 100%. You can see naturally it wants to head that direction. And I'm gonna make sure that I feed the rope far enough over here. But you wanna try to pull it all over because you wanna feed it, right? It'd be easier to feed over there. So I just gotta make sure that this works perfect, huh? Yeah. Let's go get our treasure over here. Look at this big mess of stuff. I, I wanna show you all I have on here because this is obviously stuff that humans didn't eat and they were gonna eventually pitch it out. I see a couple of flies kicking off there as well. Head over to the other side, the business end of this thing. We gotta make a guess, a final guess on how much we're putting in there. It's gonna be a lot. Princess Auto latex gloves. Princess always getting a lot of play in this video there, Don. Sure does. sure does, right? Very handy. This this one I'm not too sure if it's gonna work or not because it's, um. It's actually roadkill deer. I mean, it's already pre-cooked. It actually smells good. You want to smell that? Does it smell like you'd eat it? Yeah, it smells like it's smoked. <laughs> it's smoked. Yeah. <laughs> Something we just didn't get to. Um, so yeah, that's going to be converted into fish food. Complete the cycle. Oh, it's sagging already. Gross uh, salmon from you know the spawn oh, that yeah. the spawn that didn't work. They they thought they would do something with it and decided not to do anything with it. So you could say like 40% of that's gonna turn into maggots, right? Cause that's about the ratio they get from it. So my tenant decided, decided to move out and left the freezer full of stuff. So we got uh, How many pounds five is that? kilos. Five so, kilos, yeah. the whole package. Yeah. So that's uh, 11, pounds. 11 pounds. 
11 pounds so we're, we're probably like let's say that's 11 let's say that's at least um will be at least 10 like 15 say so we're 30 35 35 pounds so far we got uh some random chicken legs that look like they got freezer burnt somebody forgot these at the bottom of their freezer and decided never to eat them again again i went down my whole street and i said hey i'm doing a maggot feeder if you got waste let's not waste it somebody changed their mind about eating a heart <laughs> of some sort i'm guessing since it's professionally wrapped it's probably a cow heart well, nip that off. oh is it stuck oh. i don't even know what this is that is an absolute mystery to me can you tell what that is don oh i know what it is a carcass of some sort it's a it's a, it's a back end of a beaver oh yeah? <laughs> yeah that is that is a that is a big weight of stuff that is a big big weight of stuff like we're we're 80 pounds here at least 80 pounds this is uh that's a carcass from in here actually that's a uh, rainbow rainbow trout leftovers so is your mouth watering don or not no but no, it doesn't uh, it doesn't smell yet no so, it's all fresh meat so it's all fresh and frozen mostly, yeah, fresh so fresh frozen meat a few days from now <laughs> no you won't want to be around for that oh look at that so i saved this because in anticipation of doing this and this is some I don't even know what that is. Looks like some wild game that somebody shared with somebody else and didn't want it. But that is a freezer burn something or other. There we go. You know, at this point you don't care. It's not like it's No, it's uh, not rotting meat. It's not rotting meat. No, it's, it's not, just and it's not even uh fought out yet. No, so. it's frozen. It's not gonna make you sick, but you're gonna want wash my hands. Yeah, you're gonna want to wash your hands after. Oh man, this is gonna be the most epic ever. Do you know what that's from, Don? That should look familiar. Yeah, these are from the pond. They're from the pond. Yeah, yeah those are the ones that, that died. They went, they, they died out. Wow, we can try, see what happens. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. That is some weight there. That's some weight. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> let's, let's get it over the grass here a little bit, maybe. Oh, is it gonna slide anymore? Why doesn't it want to slide, Don? Oh, you, you've tied it. Oh boy. Yeah, we're gonna to have to tighten that up a bit. Yeah. Do you think we're at five? We can't be at 500 pounds yet, are we? No, I wouldn't think so. There, but there is probably. Well, I don't think there's. <laughs> there's maybe 200. 200 pounds. All right, so we got taken five feet out of this rope if we can. <laughs> got a knot further up, <laughs> which I don't know if I could get even on my own here. Uh, what do you think? Is it floating now? Or no. close? No. It's close. <laughs> Is this rope gonna hang up? Seems to be okay still. All right. Dude, that's a beaver, eh? That's the beaver? Yeah. <laughs> so the alternative is to try to figure out a way to hang it up over top of it, right? So we turned the camera off for a second and uh, down she went. The whole thing flipped out on us. <laughs> I lost everything. So this is all we got left is this giant beaver well we'll see if we can pull it all the way across and i don't know i don't think we're going to get the last little bit in there we need a non-stretchy cable oh look at the flies they're starting already that's a good sign okay there we go good and try something else with it we got uh, i think we got enough tension on there and look at the activity down there don see them all so it's warmer down there right yeah. imagine it'll probably settle down on its own but for now this is one big gob of stuff these are all the winter kill fish from the pond look at that lovely so the beaver you said go for it <laughs> are we gonna go for it, go for it? <laughs> are you trusting that we can uh, hold it 
Let's try it. You didn't want to try it? Well, do you want to put it back in your freezer? No, <laughs> it's not going back in the freezer. No, I saved it for this. This is the project I saved it for. 250 pounds of meat. That's 250 pounds of meat. What's the working capacity of the rope? 550? 100 pounds? 100 pounds? That's what it it's a, the rope only holds 100 pounds? Yeah. Which rope? This one here. I thought it was 1500. No, that was the, uh, that was the ratchet strap. Th this rope only holds 100 pounds? No, 100 feet. That's 100 feet. 100 pounds, 45 kilos, safe working. <laughs> <laughs> we're, in, we're in rough shape, Don. This is... Let's uh, see if their estimates are correct. <laughs> I, this is going to end up in the pond. If this ends up in the pond, we're in big trouble. She's full to the brim there, Donsky. Is it going to stay out of the water? That's the question. Want me to go start pulling? Well, you might as well go. I don't, I don't think there's any turning back now. She's in the water now, but that's okay. Keep her going. She's right in the water. These things are stretching too much. Just pulling that right down. Well, it's in the water now, so the only other thing we could do is bring it back this way. Keep going, Don. It's still in the water. Yeah, it's swimming. Oh, it was the beaver that did it, man. You think we take out the beaver? Well, we gotta take out something. Like, it's not gonna work here. Uh, we'll see if it goes without, without the beaver. Is it gonna go? I think it's still gonna. Well, it's higher on the other side, isn't it? No. It's going to be out of the water there. All right, so Don's got uh, another ratchet strap. We're going to hook up on this side to take some of the slack out here without hopefully... Look at that. Look at that tension on that thing. That's tighter than the banjo string. All right, we spare you guys all the hard work. We got a big thick cable. This is a climbing rope cable. It's not gonna stretch. Don's up on the ladder here now. I'm gonna lift and you're gonna, or do I have to lift? I have to um, lift a little bit, maybe, to get the slack out. We've got about five feet to work with on the other side. I'm, I'm going to get this dang beaver in the pot. It's gonna go, we're determined to do it at all costs. We got the, the weight is being carried right now by the wheelbarrow. And we'll know we're doing a good job once it lifts up. But if that's all you can go there, Don, that's okay. Yeah, I'm too close to the tree. Okay, we'll head back to the other side and finish off the rest of it. It's uh, actually window washer. Right? <laughs> so, should be uh, good for 10,000 pounds. Probably whatever we can put into this thing. I don't think we got it lifted off the wheelbarrow yet, but... Oh, 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 <laughs> I spoke too soon. We got, we got lift off maybe. I don't know if I can crank it too much more, but. I think we're good there. We got some good height. This is the best maggot feeder ever. Look how high it is off the ground now. And it's got most of the weight, we think. Well, okay. Moment, moment of truth, give her, give her a tug there, Donnie. Oh, do you wanna, yeah. wanna just pull it off? Yeah, just pull it off, see what happens. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, <laughs> oh no, she's still in the drink. Wow. Back to the drawing board. <laughs> well, we switched trees if you haven't been able to tell because, well, nothing's working. And so if nothing's working, that means you got to reimagine everything so we're about 15 feet or more up the tree on both sides now we just need it off the water and that's going to be a victory okay, okay let go it's good that's good i'm gonna drag it are you gonna tighten that one up more? yeah let's do the other side first okay. don 
Oh, look at it. We're, every pump is taking it off the, off the ground for an inch. It's pretty basic engineering, but for us it's a lot, eh, eh Don? <laughs> it seems to have been a, like <laughs> a little bit of a challenge. Catastrophic failure is always a distinct possibility when you're suspending 250 pounds of raw meat over a pond. Okay, everybody ready? Yep. Oh, she's tight on this side. Oh. oh my gosh, I don't know if we can go any further than that. That's not a it's not bad for what we're what we managed to do. Let's get it a little bit closer. We should we should be on the up and up now, maybe. Okay, I think that's all we're gonna do there. Um but ideally we might want over in the deeper spot, right? Yeah, it'll be, no, it'll be deeper over here in this corner. Shallow here. The fish will still get it there. I think that's good. We'll leave it there. That's done. Oh, that was a three hour job. It was not supposed to be a three hour job. You did it though. You <laughs> did it. You, it looks good. Persistence pays. 250 pounds of meat, raw meat in there. So that'll make about, uh, you know, 80 pounds of fish food. And a winch it. <laughs> 3,500 pound winch. You can't move it. <laughs> no way. <laughs> so we've doubled up on the uh, ratchet straps. We got like a big beefy version up there now. And then we got the proper climbing rope. And uh, Kevin's got the tractor here. So he's got an idea with that. Who said snap? No one. <laughs> that's probably good. That's probably good. Hey, a bit more? That's that's good right there. Perfect. Sure. Yeah, perfect. Uh, it was supposed to be like a half an hour job. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a half a day job. Yeah. Um, yeah. Turns out suspending 250 pounds of meat. It's not that easy. No, over a pond. Last time we didn't do as big and the run wasn't as long. Uh, I would recommend probably some cable, some chain around the tree. Uh, some, heavy some heavy straps. duty ratchet straps yeah and then obviously the winch was the last thing that got it to pull tight so anyway we're uh, i'm going to come back in a couple days once it starts working and uh you can hear the party forming behind us we're going to go a bite to eat before we take off so thanks for your help don it's not a problem i'll let you know Anytime. how it turns out yeah <laughs> all right guys well welcome back to the world's largest and most effective maggot feeder we got 250 pounds of meat rotting over top of our pond I have noticed that there is not a pungent smell yet, but I am just on my initial approach here. We're going to check on the progress of our maggot feeder. And as you can see, we have a lot of fly action going on. Take a big sniff and I can't smell anything, but you can be darn sure that those flies smell something. So we're gonna drag it over here and find out what stage of uh, the maggoting business that we're in yet we're hoping we're going to have lots of egg activity we should be able to find the eggs on top of the meat if we look carefully enough and now is a good time because well it doesn't smell repulsive yet it is going to be getting pretty darn close here now we did put the meat in frozen so that's probably taken a half a day to a day we're on day three right now so this is when we really should be starting to see the oh yep never mind I got a whiff and it ain't good. <laughs> oh. Oh, not good. Oh. Oh. oh, there's flies all over this thing, man. Imagine what it's gonna do in a couple more days. Whew. Kind of interesting is that they it looks like they really targeted the orifices like they put it on the snout of the beaver they put it on the gill plates of the fish in in the mouth and then they found little crevices i can imagine they're probably working on the on the underside of everything too trying to get it up and then they're what they want to do is they want to try to find a way to get those worms the maggots the eggs to burrow into the flesh and then get on the inside and work their way out because they don't want the 
the maggot, the worm, to the juvenile to fall off early, right? They, they assume this is going to be on the ground somewhere and then they're going to be able to bury it and the worm's going to fall off and go on the ground and then pupate. So, oh, I can't, I can't stand there anymore. That's disgusting. Oh, oh, so rank. That, that's obviously the downside of doing a maggot feeder. It's just the raw smell, you know, the putrid smell. Um, you know, the low cost, the easy aspect of it is the benefit. But, you know, if you can get earthworms that don't smell at all, that's obviously more conducive to have the lifestyle of a pond, you know. You want to be able to hang out down here without having to throw up your lunch. So again, if you guys have any ideas about that worm feeder, the earthworm feeder, let me know because this is not a long-term solution to a perpetual problem of feeding your, you know, your backyard trout, your backyard fish. There's a variety of different flies that can lay eggs on top of rotting meat. One of the most common ones, the blowfly, it can lay up to 300 eggs at a time. Obviously the female is doing the hard work there. Um, other species may lay between 75 and 150 eggs at a time. Uh, a piece of meat can carry a ton of maggots. For example, it was found that on rotting meat of only 156 grams, there was 48,000 maggots on it. Obviously, not those maggots didn't survive all the way through to adulthood because they just didn't simply have enough food to eat. But, you know, if a fly can find a piece of meat to lay an egg on, they will. That's for darn sure. After that, the eggs will emerge and hatch after between 24 and 48 hours, and then they'll start eating right away and add growth. And that will last between three and five days before it turns into a full-blown adult. After that, it's gonna find a safe, secure, hidden and dark environment to pupate. And from there, it will go through a couple of different stages before it emerges after eight to 10 days as a full adult. And then after that, of course, it's gonna find some more meat to lay eggs on and produce the next progeny. If this happens too late in the season, the fly will not hatch because the temperatures won't be conducive for its survival and will simply lie dormant until next time the temperatures rise enough that it could actually survive and complete the life cycle. So obviously this starts later off in the summer peak being at the warmest times of the year because obviously that's when the uh, fly has the best chance of survival. Well, we did do some other improvements to the pond. I figured they give you guys an update, quick update anyway. There's the, uh, that's actually turned out pretty good. The floating uh, bog, the floating bog. We'll call that the floating bog. It's, uh, you know, you should watch the video. You should really should watch it. But the cattails I put in there, there's a, they're, they're actually coming up now. And that's going to, it's designed to take up the extra nitrogen that we put in from the feed. It, it floats around, it does a really good job. At first, everything died off, all of the marsh marigold. That probably wasn't a great idea. Although I do seem to see some juvenile marsh marigold growing up now. So I imagine if I can keep this intact, next spring, that marsh marigold is going to take over. And then after that, the cattails are going to poke through. So that's actually been a success. I should have probably started a little bit earlier, but it's taken off now. Look at those fresh new cattails growing up. Now you might be able to hear the light motor of the condors aerator. That's from Nature's Pond Care. It's right here because it's overcast today. So it's struggling to have enough solar power to get going. We added a swamp down here and you can see it's not quite connected to the main pond. There's a little bit of a ledge there, which I prefer because I want this whole area here to fill in with cattails. So this is gonna be the nitrogen recovery area. So you can see, I initially had a lot of the cattails I replanted from over here. I actually moved them because uh, they weren't actually working all that good over here, but you can see now they're starting to actually plant and take off all around the ridge here. And I would expect as this uh, erodes, it's gonna be a nice low lying area where the cattails are gonna completely take over here. I did take a shovel and kind of slough off the edges a little bit just to kind of drop it down. And then those plants are taking off now. They're gonna shoot roots all through this whole system and completely expand. We also have the windmill. If you're in a sunny spot, obviously go with the solar powered. And if you don't get much sun, but you get a lot of wind, you're gonna to go to want to go to go to that windmill because that windmill will drive the air down really low. So we've got all our bases covered now to produce lots of healthy rainbow trout. And incidentally, I've been taking a rainbow trout out of this pond once a week for eating at home. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, that's a big one. 
that is a freaking giant holy oh holy jumpers i don't know if that's clark that might be clark i don't know oh i gotta keep him out of that holy gotta keep him away from the ducks oh no he's gonna jeepers stay here holy jumping dolly dolly smokes stay here oh 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 holy smokes oh oh, oh. i got him <laughs> <laughs> that's not Clark, but that's a big one. Oh, holy jumping. Whew. Look at this fish. <laughs> holy smokes. Holy smokes. <laughs> that is not the big fish. That is the fish that maybe was not swimming too well. Holy. I was going to grab two today. But that is plenty of fish for me for this week. You guys definitely got to get yourself some fish. Make yourself a pond. Linden Trout Hatchery has all of the trout you'll ever need. We're going to check back in in a couple more days to see how this maggot feeder progresses. I definitely want to be here once it starts dropping maggots in the pond. I also want to run an experiment where I fly fish with a maggot imitator to see if that will trigger a bite for my one week's ration of rainbow trout. Oh, hey guys, it's been uh, two more days. I got Holden here. He's gonna do a reaction of what he thinks about I do for a living here. He's like, he's like, oh, you do this. So just a box with some meat in it, right? I'm like, yeah, pretty much. And he's like, oh, it looks kind of ridiculous because it's all hung up in the trees and whatnot. You get a whiff of it yet? It smells so bad. <laughs> like. Have you ever had like uh, compost and then fl and then flies get in it and it smells like maggots? That's what it smells like except way worse. Well, it doesn't smell like maggots. It smells like rotten meat. It smells like rotten yeah. compost. He does the compost at home, so you should be used to this. Not you do that. He does the dishes, he does the garbage, and he does the compost. So if he does the compost or garbage incorrectly, you're in the maggot business, just like me. Oh, that's not good. You, you taste it? I taste it. <laughs> Are you sure the bottom's not gonna break? Yeah, I hope the bottom doesn't break. It, it shouldn't. Looks like it's, it's sagging. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not surprised. There's a heck of a lot of meat in there. I put beef. Don't have to untie that one. Don't have this one. No, you just have to pull it, right? Oh. Yeah. So give her gent gentle pull. We don't want to lose it. Don't forget to use your legs, eh? Yeah. yeah. Like get a bend in there. Get a good bend in there. It's like yeah. There you go. Use your weight. Pour in there. Oh, she's coming. Oh, look at that. A little bit of juices came out the bottom there. You see that? Yeah, you don't want to you don't want to stand underneath it in case it all fall it fails, but it should be okay. It smells bad now. It's it smells bad or it's getting closer. Can you yeah. taste it yet? <laughs> you 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 happy you already ate lunch, but you might chuck it up, right? <laughs> <laughs> you get one more half pull in there, it should be good. Is that it? It's all you got? Okay, that should be good. What, you get a, you get some uh, offenders there. Yeah, there, there's probably three times as many flies on there as last time. Definitely. Like if a fly lands on you, it's like putting rotten meat on your flesh. So don't let anything land on you there. I already did. A fly landed on you? Like it, I. Hit oh, it. dude. <laughs> oh, oh my god. <laughs> That's so bad. The, the first, okay, so the okay, first... Take off the liquid. Take off the, no, no, we, no, we gotta, you gotta soak it in, man. <laughs> where, are the, where are the gloves? <laughs> where are the gloves? Well, if I touch anything, you know I'm touching, it's t basically touching raw meat. Like yeah, well, raw meat. Gloves, so then you're not so I want to explain to you, the, the first time I did this, I had to check to see how it would work. So I did it at home. So I basically put like, I put meat in a garbage pail because I knew the maggots couldn't crawl out of it. So I basically had to handle it every day and then it was in the neighborhood and I knew everybody was smelling it. So 
Anyway, when I handled it, I had to dump everything out and I had to sort out the maggots because I had to chuck them, just the maggots, not the meat and everything, into the pond to see how the fish would react. Okay. Eat them? Yeah, the fish will eat them. Yeah, yeah. that's the whole yeah. point, right? Well, obviously. Obviously. I just so, asked Yeah, right. so, yeah, you know. Yeah. You're putting things together now. So the point is, every time I handled it, all that stench of rotting meat would come up and it would be like, it would permeate my clothes and it, and it permeated my beard. That's so <laughs> pungent, it permeated my beard. So I would wash my hands and I would be like, where's that smell coming from? I would take, take my, like change all my clothes, obviously change my pants. And then I would be sitting there like editing or something, putting the footage together. I'm like, what's that smell? So, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> so the point is I couldn't get rid of the smell cause it was freaking in my beard. So I'm sitting there and I'm just getting whiffs from my beard of like rotting meat flesh. Is this you trying to get me to do it? <laughs> no, you won't get caught in your beard yet. You just your little little mustache form in there. It's probably very gonna be bad. very bad, yeah. It's already bad. It's already bad. <laughs> so there's a reason people don't do these kinds of things, right? Holden's realizing why. <laughs> you got some, some surgical gloves. You can just wash your hands or lick them, right? Yeah. Yeah? Just lick them. Just lick them. <laughs> It's like eating, like, there's, oh. there, yeah, see, there's a reason it's so pungent. It's like, it would, you would probably die if you ate it, right? So your body's like, no, don't like that smell. Like, it's repulsive. It's the worst smell in the world. I swear, like, and it, it gets in your, it gets in, it'll get in your skin and you'll still smell it. Like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm coming over there. Oh, so I can, yeah. All right, off she goes. Let's have a, oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, there is like just a feast going on in there. It's so it's so amazing that they like really they really focus oh. on. Did you get a whiff? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. There we go. You get they really focus on like the holes. Some more holes in there. It seems like they're they're keying in on the orifice uh, orifices of the beaver. So if I punch a bunch of holes in there, they might lay more in the holes and then car and then carve the animal out from the inside. I think that's the idea. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh they're attacking me. <laughs> oh, okay, I had enough. I'm, oh. uh, that's bad. The, the maggots might be all inside right now. It, like a couple more, couple more days at least. <laughs> I was gassed out. It's just like, it hits you like a sack. Anyway. Yeah, I think we gotta wait, we gotta be patient. It's gonna be, there, there might be some worms active on the inside, that's what I'm guessing is they wanna hatch, like they're, they're focusing in on the orifices so that they, they hatch and then they go inside the cavity. So it might just be like a mess of worms active on the inside right now is my guess. Uh, I guess they have, ha they have hatched by now. It smells bad. It smells bad, what else? Put it, put it back out there. Yeah, put it back out there, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, pretty interesting. So you're gonna come back in a couple of days, we're gonna see some, some maggots. I want to see some maggots land in the water. That's like the that's that's that's, that's a reward, man. It's the peak, peak, uh, project completion. Yeah, the, yeah, the the climax. Yeah, the hundred percent complete when the one drops in. That's right. And we see the fish come up and grab it, and like oh, oh it's a success. We we fed the fish like on a, a, our own devices, our like own a, engineering. Like a movie scene. It drops down, and the fish jumps out of the water. Well, guys, I couldn't resist. It's next day, and. There is so much more activity happening right now. This is so fascinating to me. Leftovers, the decomposing flesh, it's gonna turn that into, it's just, just basically gonna turn it back into new life. It's so crazy cool. I could tell you there's probably about a thousand flies here right now, covering every single orifice in here, every fish, all of the, the tail from the beaver, the complete beaver, Everywhere, every nook and cranny is being occupied right now by a fly and maggots have hatched. They are actively feeding right now around the, the fish and around the beaver. I gotta move because it absolutely freaking reeks here. Um, but uh, it, it, the, having the lid on keeps the moisture down in there, stops it from drying out and the activity right now is really, really, really good. The maggots right now are only teeny tiny little things right now. They're gonna grow up in the next three days into full adults. So in about three days, we're gonna see them start to drop down. 
The uh, fish are getting hungry. I have not fed them in anticipation of the massive amounts of feed that they're going to get from these maggots. Once they start dropping in the water, we're going to see all those fish surfacing and grabbing stuff. While I've been here watching the maggots, I have noticed a couple of fish rise, so I know they're getting hungry. I can't wait for this to start dropping. Man, there's a ton of activity in there. That is so cool. Well, it's next day. We're gonna check up every day. I'm gonna come back tomorrow because tomorrow I think is gonna be D-Day. I did some research. It's 24 hours between instars and there's three instars. So there's the egg, 24 hours you hatch into a little tiny maggot. 24 hours it, attaches, it hatches into a second size maggot. And then third day, which will be tomorrow, it'll be a full size maggot ready to go off into the wilderness and pupate. Actually, I did see one fall in the water already. So there is an adult stage already happening. It could have been bumped, it might not be the full size, but there is one in the water. I've been tracking it with the other camera real close, but uh, the fish hasn't clued into it yet. Could be because it's, you know, we're hovering over top of it. It also could be that the fish have identified it as a source. Once this thing starts dropping, they're gonna be clued into it, and anything that resembles a maggot, they're gonna grab. So let's check out the progress here. The smell isn't too bad right now. Thankfully, it is uh, it is there. The fly activity is obviously dumbed down right now because it's been raining. So, oh yeah, actually it does smell pretty bad. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my God. Oh, that smells, oh, that smells terrible. Actually, oh. there's quite a bit of... Oh, I don't even think it rained in there. I don't even think... That's bad. That smells bad. Oh, it's bad. Oh, ow. <laughs> All right, come over here. We gotta talk. I can't talk over there. Ugh. Oh, it's so bad. Cool. I, I, so I did some research. I wanted to learn more about maggots. So, um, there, there's a putrid mass on top of there, which I don't think it could be partially because it got wet, but uh, maggots, they work in a ball and they feed inside this like, a mass and what they're doing is what they're, they're spitting up digestive juices all over the meat and they have a protective coating so it doesn't bother them and they're moving around in this ball and on the inside of it can be up to like 50 degrees celsius and then so they get so hot they can migrate out and what they're doing is just sending that the protection and juices all over and digesting the meat so that uh you know they have things to, to do to eat right they can't just eat well they have teeth but they need to soften it right the the meat will dry up so anyway that's pretty cool and then they don't actually break up off, off that ball until they're ready to go off and find security to pupate i think they're on their second stage now so like i said tomorrow is going to be d-day tomorrow is going to be when they're dropping off like flies and <laughs> uh, that's probably why it came from i don't know who knows all right come in closer holden don't slip and fall you're gonna get a face full of maggots if you do so there's a couple other bugs here so i'm guessing what these guys are are uh meat munchers i don't know what they're called it's a special kind of bug that will be attracted to desiccate decaying animals um so it's obviously attracted by the smell so they've uh, they've uh moved up on top here i don't know why they're on top but i'm guessing it's because maybe because it rained they climbed up here was a little bit safer so what we're going to do here we're going to grab a couple we're going to throw them in the water because we actually don't want these guys to eat all the meat and we're going to see if uh if they don't end up as food for the uh fish oh the frog just ate one of those bugs see it Where? right there on the rock it's got it in its mouth you see it yeah it just ate one of those bugs i threw in the water i wonder if these guys can fly oh yeah they're fluttering around there so if we hear any splashing in the meantime we'll know what from and we're going to grab some second instar larva and we're going to chuck them in the water and we're going to see what happens i'm afraid you know i don't know why <laughs> because i know that smell is going to go right through these gloves like it's 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 amazing how potent that smell is and how much that smell your body doesn't like so it can really detect that smell oh gross okay i flicked out maybe i don't know six or seven ten maybe <clears throat> but again i don't know if they're going to be clued into this yet so i'll grab another handful here oh oh just like little rice pellets 
Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, I gotta get this glove off before it soaks in. We're gonna have an eye in there. Holden, Holden got the camera in there. Whew. All right, no, no activity there. I'm gonna try one more handful and then I'm just gonna assume that the fish aren't clued into it yet. There was, has been no rises, which is unusual. But that's the way it is. I saw the little frog, it ate my bug. One more handful of maggots and then we're just gonna have to be patient. Just gonna let, let nature take its course here. Oh my God. Oh. oh my gosh, that's so disgusting. When you grab it, it's like a handful of nothing. They, they literally have no weight. Oh. Oh. You don't think the fish are gonna grab anything? <laughs> They're definitely not clued into that color. They stand out pretty good. If one would grab it, we would definitely hear or see it. But this would be the first day that they'll be hitting the water, so they're, they might not be watching for them yet. Next day, more activity. I got a scooper, I got smart. I scoop some maggots out, chuck them in there. It looks like there's a lot of maggots on the surface, but uh, not seeing anything rise. And there's some maggots dropping down all the time, it looks like. See if we can grab some of the bigger ones here. There we go. What do you guys think of that? Just a seething mass of maggots. All that delicious food. What do you think? What's your face doing over there? Let me see here. <laughs> What's that face? That's nasty. Here. No, I'll throw it in first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you want to be the cameraman then? Yeah. Just look at that. Look how fascinating that is, though. It's just like there's so much activity in there. And look, the, the, oh, oh, something freaked me out. Something landed on my leg. <laughs> oh, look at they want to crawl out. So I'd say these guys are ready. Let's chuck them in, and oh, they're just landing on the ground now. <laughs> I'll throw them in before they land on the ground. All right, we'll throw them in. Look at them landing. All right, here we go. Hopefully we get a reaction here. <laughs> How satisfying is that? There, we got a good coverage here. Well, the water temperature is pretty warm. I'm guessing that there's gonna be a lot of underwater activity here. So we may not get the satisfaction of seeing those fish feed on the maggots. Like there's definitely a lot on the surface but as soon as they sink, those fish are gonna definitely swoop in and pick them off. We got the camera mounted up top there. I'm gonna let that run for a couple hours, see if we get some surface action. Cause that's obviously the most satisfying part. But I can tell you last time I fed my trout maggots in the other pond, uh, the clarity was a lot better. I could see the maggots falling down and the trout coming in and hammering them like there's no tomorrow. They were absolutely loving the maggots all the way through the entire water column. Oh, I gotta move because this stinks really bad. Oh. You see the fish? Did you see it? Yeah. No, you see it over there? Yeah. It okay. keeps rising over there. That's where the deeper water is. So I'm gonna grab a scoop of maggots. We're gonna go over there. But the, the maggots, they're, they're landing here. They're, oh, there's another fish right there. You see that, that ring there? Oh, again. Okay, over here, we got some action. So the, wor the maggots are landing and then they're dispersing over the whole. There we go. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's get get a little bit closer here without trying to spook them. Oh, again. There we go. Oh, look at them all underwater there. Grabbing stuff. I just saw a flash. Are you zoomed in there, Holden? Oh, look. Yes. <laughs> I was losing hope. I'm gonna give you guys a taste of what it looks like in ultra clear water because uh, I got some old footage from the other pond just to see like if you want to do this for like panfish or bass obviously trout works too uh, I imagine catfish would grab these off of the bottom but any kind of fish that you can think of will go after you know they're they're basically trout mouth sized but any fish will grab them we've got activity all over the pond okay I'm gonna grab another scoop still uh, I thought they were active just on the other side so they're active here, but there's, there's a trail of them. It's going this way and the aerator is kind of moving everything over here. And some of the maggots are sinking. So the fish are definitely, they're trained more to be feeding down below. I would like to see them hovering 
just below the feeder though coming up and grabbing stuff as it hits the water but just like the whole top of the whole pond is just covered in maggots right now it's it's an insane amount of food and so because the water temperatures are so warm the, the fish are basically feeding down low so they're going to wait for those maggots to drop down below the surface so we're not going to necessarily see a lot of activity every time i move it it just drops maggots in the pond just kind of shake them out oh there's another bite over there another fish rose that seems to be the more popular spot so we'll grab a we'll grab a scoop and we'll head over there i think this the currents are bringing food over that direction a little bit more well, July and August are always really tricky times for cold water species like trout. And I really wanted to get some activity of the trout feeding on the maggots kind of in real time. But the temperatures actually went up to critical. They're around 22 degrees Celsius. You'll have to convert that, but that's kind of out of the trout comfort zone. So I did capture some trout coming up on the surface, like not doing too well actually took off for the week and uh, Kevin was monitoring the pond for me and he told me that uh, four fish died so it might actually have been these four fish that were up near the surface just as I was leaving uh, since then the temperature did drop and I did mount a camera up above the pond to kind of observe things as uh, the maggots were dropping because I wanted to see that surface surface activity or show you guys at least what I saw which was the fish grabbing maggots from the top you can see them swirling just below or just out around the surface you can tell they're just kind of lipping around the surface so that's uh, activity from the maggots being dropped and then being dispersed all around the pond some of the maggots definitely do sink straight away but the majority of them kind of float around the top and then they get moved around the pond so this is over the course of uh, six hours I actually have the camera just running up on a tripod up on top of the cube so I had a good aerial view and uh, you can see just how many trout were smacking off those maggots. So I'd say that was a pretty successful experiment. I did also intend to catch a trout and then open up the gut contents, but uh, as the week went on, uh, Kevin tired of the maggot feeder and the smells of it, so he ended up taking it down. And then on, upon return, I still take my weekly fish. So I set up Holden with a fishing rod. He's my son, and uh, I'll get into those clips in a second here. He had a good time catching my trout for dinner. There you go. So what I did is I put my finger in there like that, mm -hmm. pushed it backwards, turn like that, and then hit it right in the brain. Like that. Hard. As hard as you can. Oh, there we go. We got her done. Got a nice a big a rainbow trout from the pond. He uh, still he refined his technique a little bit on catching fish. What was the biggest problem you got there? Getting caught, uh, getting, what's it called? Snagged. snagged. Getting snagged on the bottom. But, uh, you know, and you got to keep the line at the in the water column at the right depth that the fish are hanging out at. So the fish aren't like super high and they're not super low. They're just in that little sweet spot. That's a good uh, pound and a half, two pounder maybe. That's more than two pounds. There you go, first fish out of the pond. Getting used to holding them, just like that, in the gills. We knocked them out, and uh, where he was hooked, it actually bled out on its own. That's gonna be my dinner. You gonna have a, you have a bite or two? 
Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Well, you caught it. You gotta have a bite of it. Yeah. You gotta have a bite of it. 